6 o'clock, we'll bring the meeting of the Nicolau City Council to order. I welcome all of the guests, <coughs> members of council, and administration. And with that, we'll have the roll call. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Here. Councilman Shammy? Here. Councilwoman Wright? Here. Councilman Lindsay? Here. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Here. Six members present. With that, the invocation will be by Chief Trustee. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the day and thy many blessings and many favors and the beautiful weather. Please be in this meeting tonight, Lord. Let thy perfect will be done. Keep thy mighty head upon our city. Bless our, our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. And the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> that I'll need a motion for the uh, August 5th regular session minutes. Any corrections or additions? Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Minutes accepted, 6 0. All right, have we got any communications that I'm not aware of? I guess not. With that, we'll go to the city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor Cook. Uh, members of council, members of the public, uh, I'd like to start off our city manager report with our service report with our assistant city manager, uh, Howard Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council, members of the public. Uh, under Public Works Departments, uh, we are nearing our citywide dirt patching of potholes. If you see any that we may have missed, um, we are doing one final uh, run through the town. We've hit alleys over the last week and a half pretty good, but we do have a little bit more to finish up. Um, with that being said, we did receive our street sweeper late last week, and we're going through some current uh, going currently going through some training so once the training is complete we will be out um, heavy uh, you know sweeping the streets doing getting some spraying done so that way come next spring we have a good start to have our curb gutter areas uh, with no grass growing up through them and keeping those clean uh, pickleball conversion and on a need to update the report they ended up doing it on Saturday to finish up just the striping but it's complete we also hired a fencing company to come in and just tidy up the Smith Park fence around the tennis courts and the new pickleball courts. And then next year we're looking to go ahead and get it painted so then it'll look good with the, the new courts. But we did post that on social media. And as a matter of fact, when we were pulling in this evening, some people were already utilizing it. Uh, under the, I do have an update on the old high service pump building. Uh, the pass engineer had come in uh, a little over on cost, so we had to I had to go around and search around for another engineer to do the job so we did i did find another engineer and was talking with opwc today so that'll get moving further than was expected on our citywide service line inventory uh, we did a um, quick second notice and we got a lot of uh, response um, to this almost almost i think double than what we did on the very first uh, mailing so uh, it is going very well now uh, to get those updated um, and two, we did get a new update that, as I have spoke before, the lead service line, to be considered a lead service line, you have to have, you know, a lead service line. Well, there's a part to that that we have lead goosenecks in the system, all less than 24 inches. The, usually, we have three of them down at the water plant that we keep for someone who ever asks questions. We can show it. We just keep them down there. 15 to 18 inches is what we're running. So we have found out that that is actually not considered a lead service line. I'm still utilizing the money to get the lead, those lead goosenecks out, but, it, but as we all know, the federal government will make that determination here probably soon to add those goosenecks in with it. So uh, Nucralau will actually be way ahead of the game when we uh, remove that starting this uh, probably winter 
to get those out. So that's definitely a good thing. Um, under the 2024 road reconstruction resurfacing project, uh, it is so far been good news, um, uh, or I'm sorry, not good news, another project. We've already marked for oops up in the Willowook area for the new ADA ramps. So you'll see a lot of construction. We're doing 24 ADA ramps up in that area. So, you know, we'll be down to about 12 to 16 left and that whole quadrant of the city will be completing and um, up to code. So then uh, striping and some other of our pavement projects, they usually hit us last just because we're over on the Western side and the company tries to hammer out all their projects together uh, when they can do that, but we're definitely still on the docket to get that done. Um, basketball court fence has been installed at Carlisle Park. Uh, it is a black vinyl coated steel fence. It looks really good. So when you're driving by, you almost don't notice it, but it'll definitely serve a great purpose. Um, submitted our paperwork for the pool gazebo reimbursement paperwork. So I'm waiting to hear back from them to see if there's any other things that will be missing. And we will start getting our um, reimbursement for that. And then uh, Metronet, as far as Metronet's done, the underground is all complete, the overhead is complete, except for the Northwoods area. Currently that has not been approved, which Northwoods is the Galewood, Fenwick, Rawson area. Um, that area has not been approved for them to run the fiber through the air on uh, the backside of those homes. They said it could be you know, in the next couple months or it could be in a year. But that is the only part of the city that did not get fiber installed and it was a cost thing for them. Um, so I just keep in touch with them to find out. As far as the rest of Metronet, uh, under, everything is done. They, I think they're about finishing up with down guy wires, which are those wires that tie off the pole and help keep it straight. Um, they're just connecting people now. So there should be no more you know, digging up yards, having to restore yards, things like that. If there is any, call me. We're probably dealing with another telecommunications company at that point, uh, which I gotta give Metronet credit. They called and we've, we've had meetings. As a matter of fact, I think we have our final monthly meeting tomorrow uh, on this. So that has went well. And then as far as uh, CDBG critical uh, projects, it is looking really good for our Carlisle Park Phase 2. I was just informed I need to give them a little bit more detail on the new parking lot and where we'll do the new ADA swing um, in Carlisle Park, but it is looking very favorable for the city of New Carlisle to get the, the funds. But I have not heard back on the critical infrastructure portion to do Ross in Phase 1. And that is all I have to update on my report. I can entertain any questions on the report. Go ahead, Ken. I have a few, sorry. Um, the sewers and the water, when you go under a blacktop road, are those all replaced or, or looked at to be repaired and stuff so there's no tear up of that brand new blacktop six weeks later? Uh, typically, typically it's not. Well, I mean, we look at it, but typically the funds are not there to put the, you know, let's say Washington Street is $100,000 to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be well over a million dollars to do water and sewer. So it's just usually the funds aren't there. Um, plus, and, and that's maybe a bad example, that area has a ductile iron pipe and typically ductile 75 to 100 years, um, you know, minimum on service life. We look at it, but a lot of times that utility does not, does not get replaced. So you are doing Washington Street. Are you doing it clear from Smith Park on? Or are you doing it from what, Bill of, what is the name of that one? I forget the name. Yeah, of it. Um, in, in there it's, uh, so Washington Street is being completed here from the dead end up to from, Smith Street. Okay. And then Villa is being done from Smith. Just to to Smith Street? The other part of Washington is done up to Henry. Oh, okay. And then the reason we're not doing any of the old section is the water mains will be getting replaced in that area starting this winter. Um, so we're not doing any road repairs on Washington, Lincoln, Jackson, Henry, Adams, because there's, they're going to be tearing up the roads there to put all the new water mains and services in. That makes sense. But um, then what other roads are you paving? A villa from Smith to Washington this year. That's Villa, and why not? Why Villa instead of Henry? Because Henry seems a lot worse. It, sometimes it comes to cost, and actually, some of the curb is worse. It, it's there's a couple of different things we look at on length. How many? How much funds do we have? To you know, we had the extra hundred. We look at the total cost plus the ADA ramps that we may have to do uh -huh. uh, in there. So, and 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 a lot of times Washington's already done, so we're going to tie in newer asphalt to that new asphalt. And Henry goes all the way from Madison all the way around, so it's just it's a longer road. So we may need a whole year's just to do Henry by itself instead of multiple streets that we typically do. 
Hmm. Okay. Um, you said you're expanding the plant, the old water plant. What is that one? Is that the one on Main Street? Uh, the water plant is on Main Street. We're not looking to expand it currently. Mm -hmm. The wastewater plant, which is down behind a grain elevator, okay. uh, it, it's, its potential is there. Um, uh, once these developments go in, that if we further develop, there's always a the potential for that wastewater plant to be expanded. So you're just talking potential, but you're making plans? Yeah, we always do. You <laughs> always make plans for that time whenever they say, hey, within the next couple of years, you're ready to go. We have, we have a... A, a guide on what we need to do, estimate a cost, and when we bring that engineer on, we have all the, the basically the, the groundwork laid to start, not start from scratch. Okay. That just seems real expensive if you're not wanting to do it now to get the engineer and all that done. You always have to do a study prior to doing a construction project when sure. you do expansions. So we're doing the study now which incorporated the current developments, any future developments past that, and any possible commercial that come in. We took in all the population, so they could gear us for like 10 to 15 years out. So that way, if in five years, if we decide, hey, we need a plan expansion, we already have the guide and know what direction we gotta go in. Instead of then doing a study and then doing construction right afterwards, because then the, you know that can take a while. Okay. Um, I guess I only had one more question. I think you answered it. You're putting in another piece at the park, at New Carlisle Park or Carlisle Park? We applied for phase two, which was to remove the old basketball court. Right. I knew about that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and do the, the sidewalk that's there now that right. is not yeah. very good. Replace it at a, a wheelchair swing. Okay, a wheelchair swing. So, some sort swing. of a, yeah, some sort of a wheelchair uh, apparatus that will, will um, that is... Uh, Inclusive. Inclusive, that's the term I was looking for. We need to start looking at our older kids, though. I'd like to get some stuff going at the park that is based on our older children. I mean, you know, the stuff we got is kind of for the young ones, and I think we need to start looking at our little bit older kids, like 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know. Uh, most of the parks older. we put in are uh, age 4 to 12. They have a, they have a place uh, spec to them, yeah. and they're almost all 4 to 12. 4 to 12. But, mm -hmm. yeah, most 12-year-olds aren't very interested in that kind of stuff but okay thank you mm -hmm. hey. what is the time frame on the sidewalk on fees um <clears throat> not real sure at this point um probably get it scheduled here sometime soon but yeah it's definitely a project on our radar i was just curious if it was going to be before when I yeah, I still have it on my on my schedule there. It's just yeah, we're we're trying to figure out if we have the capability to do it in house. We're gonna have to you know get a contractor to come in and do it. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Kitko. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Moving on to city manager report, fire and EMS, fire and EMS report with fire chief chief trustee. Council citizens. For the month of July, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 121 EMS calls in the city. The division responded to nine fire-related calls, four good and ten calls, uh, or service calls, and zero false alarms. We had five EMS calls answered by Mutual Aid by Pike Township, and nine EMS calls answered by Bethel Clark due to Medic 5-2 being on a response. We answered three Mutual Aid calls for Pike Township, and we answered seven Mutual Aid calls for Bethel Clark, and one for Bethel Miami. Our total run volume at the time of this report was 992. At this time, we were at 1,011 runs for the year. From the last report to now, is 179 runs. Uh, we're still doing hydrant flushings. We are now in area D. We should finish up the flushings probably t tomorrow or the next day. Uh, we still have free smoke detectors for any one of our citizens. Uh, please contact the station or come by and we'll get them installed for you. Um, just Quick note, this past week we did have a, a severe fire in the city, a house fire. Um, one of the dangers that our firefighters face every time they go inside is what's called a flashover or a smoke explosion. If you look at the helmets on the counter, that's what happens. That was a brand new red helmet when he went inside. When he came out, that's over 2,000 degrees that the, that crew was faced with. Luckily, the lieutenant had right training and right smarts to get his crew to the, to the floor when it happened. He said all he remembers it was all black and then it was all red. Um, and was able to get out, uh, lost one bunker coat, burnt. Uh, thank the Lord the, the family was displaced. We did have one injury with the family 
but he has now released that out of the hospital. Any questions for the chief? Thank you, Chief. There. Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. Go ahead. Chief, uh, any idea what caused that fire over there that you're talking about? I have preliminary <laughs> results, but it's under the, uh, under the state fire marshal's investigation at this time. Okay. Right. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Fire Chief. And moving on to the city manager report under uh, planning and zoning mayor's report report. I'll give the quick stats real quick. So this is for the period dated July 27th to August 10th. August 10th, we had 52 total violations uh, entered, uh, 30 total violated properties. Uh, that averaged out to 1.75 average violations per property. We had two abatements completed and 26 closed violations. Uh, one uh, case submitted to mayor's court and then three property extensions granted. Along with that, we also have our mayor's court report, which is right here for the record. Uh, council can look at that. Um, we had quite a few pay through the violation bureau and about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight come to mayor's court. Any questions on those two reports? Any questions? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm not sure if this is the right report, but the tool lending center, there were um, two things approved for that. I was kind of curious what that was. They're probably just various tools people brought out. It could be a, a shovel, it could be whatever the case. So they took it out, but they didn't bring it back or? I, I'm shivering. I'm sure they brought it back. We've had very good success with people renting stuff out or borrowing it, bringing it back. So are they always going to be on our report then if they borrow? You'll have because I've never seen it before. Yeah, yeah. Probably it just doesn't get a lot of activity. So if someone does come rent it, we do put the stats on there for you. Okay. Yeah. That's the mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Okay. And moving on to the city manager report, our police report. Uh, so I'll give that one as well. So for our patrol precision for per, division for the month of July 2024, they had 215 calls taken, 29 reports, 50 assists, four criminal arrests, one felony arrest, three misdemeanor arrests, three warrants, 52 traffic stops, 23 traffic warnings, 29 moving citations, 733 business checks, 14 code enforcement follows up, one traffic cat, uh, crash, and 10 parking violations. Any questions on the police report? No. And moving on to the city manager report. Under our finance report, our finance director, Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, council, and residents that are here with us tonight. It's for our July finance report. Our revenue was $779,582.06. Our expenditures for the month of July was $714,000. $922.09. So our total year to date for revenue is $6,150,244.01. Our expenditures year to date is $5,151,834.35. Our ending statement of cash, our ending balance, is $7,824,697.47. All the bank accounts have been reconciled. Going to the next report, our uh, monthly net income tax collection. For July, we are up 18% um, at this point. We did collect $235,548.23. Uh, for the whole year, we're about 2% above what we collected this time last year. On our mayor's court for the month of July, with fines and court costs, uh, they collected $5,539 for a total for the year of $30,198.80. I did put in a pool report. Uh, we're not quite done. We do have revenue for August, but through July, we have brought in, the pool has brought in $76,000. $120.07. Um, the expenditures, it was kind of a hard year. Right now is $150,163.52. Now with the expenditures are those gazebos, and we will be getting some revenue from the grants that uh, Mr. Kiko <coughs> talked about. So that'll bring our revenue back up. It's still anticipating a loss for the end of the season, but it was uh, well attained. Interest income, I put this one in also. Interest rates are still up really well. 
I, I quote the Star Ohio at 5.43%, but our total income from interest for the month of July is 26000 We have collected for the year $190,000. Anticipating if it stays as good as it will, it will hit a $300,000 income for the city of New Carlisle. Most of that is in the general fund. The rest is the little bit in the cemetery perpetual fund. And with that, I um, will entertain any questions. Any questions for uh, Molly? Go ahead. <laughs> I was looking at the AT&T bills, and there are lots of AT&T bills in that one month section. I was just curious, you know, does everybody have their own separate phone that we pay separate bills for, or are they not lumped together, or I don't know. It just seems it's $1,857 for the whole month on the AT&T. So I was just kind of curious about that. Of, of how many we have? Or well, that was month adding month? up how much was paid in that last month. or well, not in that last hmm. month. That's a mixture of phone and internet. Yeah, we, it's our phone, internet. We do have a lot of different billing accounts. So they mm -hmm. come at different times with very quick due dates. So we do produce multiple checks. It would be nice to have one account. It would but, be. It seems more like it might be more cost effective to only have one. And we've asked them for it, but they they have different billing times for the different. And same with our, um, almost all our utilities are that way. But it is something that we're trying to con combine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah it just looks odd enough. to have so many. And then the one is AT&T, whatever that is. I'm not sure what that was. And that one's for the pucks that the uh, fire department and now the management uses. Oh, to have the, the internet service internets. only. So, again, there are different billing, the different billing addresses, different billing times. And uh, so we have kind of multiple checks. Well, that kind of makes right sense. Now. Okay. Well, thank you for that. You're welcome. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, Ms. Harris, I have a looking at the uh, wages, and I see it says the city manager is making one hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars a year. I didn't think it was that high. It, it's actually not. So <laughs> when we class, <laughs> we have them grouped. Like my department, the finance is a group of five. That's my finance department. The managers does consist of part of Howie's. We have April's now and all of Randy's. So okay. it is a cumulative total. Okay. It's not really that, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just wondering because when I saw that, I thought I don't remember uh, giving him a raise that big. <laughs> So that's why I was asking. Absolutely. Uh, but that also, uh, so these other totals for the Medicare and the dental and all the insurance and all that stuff is a total for the three, four people. Correct. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Correct. All right, thank you. As with all the departments, water is right. the group of water people, okay. the group of sewer. So, yes. All right, thank you. You're welcome. No, it's okay. She explained it. <laughs> Sorry. I guess everyone's done. Second. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. <coughs> Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Thank you. And under information on, thank you for the great report, Mrs. Uh, Harris. And under informational items, discussion topics, <clears throat> Matt Mill has requested to come back to the uh, next council meeting, so I have him scheduled for September 3rd. He'll be doing an, a similar presentation, but this time it will handle the Clark TCC levy and bond issue. Uh, Streetlight assessment legal ad, I attached that. I think Mr. Lindsay asked me at the last meeting about when people can come into the office of pay. So for this year, it's going to be August 21st to September 4th, and I did attach that legal ad in part of the packet so council can see that. 
And if you want to come and pay your street light legal uh, lighting assessment, you can do so. If you do not pay it in office, we do send it up for assessment uh, after um, the 4th. Um, no knock registry update. Um, I will be out for this particular meeting, I do believe, due to the family uh, death that I informed council on. Uh, but the meeting will still go on, um, and that is the update for the no knock registry. So April's going to be meeting with uh, Colleen and Angela that, uh, the, for the portions that impact her staff. And then we will have a final update to council. We'll hopefully have that up and going before the start of the next meeting. So we are excited to get that going. I think the citizens are going to like it equally as well. Monroe Meadows TIF ordinance schedule. So I don't know if council remembers that from last time for the, those who were here, but for the new members, we do have an ordinance coming up for the TIF creation for, for Monroe Meadows. That is a three read cycle. Most of our uh, legislation is either one or two reads. This particular again is three. What is unique about this next ordinance as well with Monroe Meadows, it does have an a, effective period that is uh, 30 days. Right now our ordinances are effective 15 days after passage. This one is prescribed, prescribed by the state of Ohio. So it has to be effective at least 30 days. So um, as part of that legislation process, we do have to do notification to the property owners, the school boards, and then the Clark County Commissions. Uh, so I did the property owner notif notification for the Clark County Commissioners and the property owner last Friday. Tomorrow I'll be hand delivering both notifications to the school district, which is the Council Local, and then uh, Springfield Clark TCC, the CTC. Um, so once we do that, um, the tentative schedule, well, it's not tentative, the schedule would be introduction and first reading on September 16th. Second reading would be October 7th. Third reading and action would be October 21st. And then effective date of the legislation will be November 20th. Once we do that, then it, uh, that will set up that TIF creation. And then it's going to take some time before we have that round two. To give you an example, we passed uh, DR Horton's uh, TIF quite some time ago. And we still have not got the documentation to move forward with that second round of TIF. So it may be an extended amount of time before we have that round two. But the important thing is starting the first one. Marijuana research, I was asked to look at that for council, so I em emailed council the memo on the taxing structure, as well as the summary of section Ohio Revised Code 3780.36, which is the limitations on conducts by individuals. I also in included the 2023 issue to uh, voting results in the city of New Carlisle. Uh, a, as we can see in every precinct, it did pass overwhelmingly. I just wanted council to have all the information to make the best decision they feel is best for the city. If you have any questions on that, I'd be happy to entertain it. As well as the disaster recovery response plan, it took a little bit longer to get done than I thought it would. Um, seems like I got into something, but undercover something else and then something else. But I think we do have a pretty solid final product. I am going to be meeting with Colleen and Howie. We have a business continuation plan that we also have to address. So I need to kind of look at how one is going to impact the other. I think I got it figured out, and it's basically um, we can still do our our regulated, you know, roles. We just might have to do them remotely. Um, so as we uncover some more stuff, we may have to adjust these plans, but that's exactly what they're for. You should look at them at least once every two years and then update them accordingly to your new to your new policies. So we can discuss that at a later work session, but I at least wanted to get it in front of council. Uh, I do believe we're going to talk about this at one of the upcoming work sessions, and that is Citizen of the Year. However, council wants to expand on that. We do have the award already uh, designed and, and made, um, but again, at a future work session, maybe council can look at that and decide what you're going to do with that. Uh, next steps. Upcoming legislation, Monroe TIF uh, creation ordinance, uh, again, see schedule above. And then you also have the reserves at Honey Creek TIF legislation round two. Um, I do believe I dropped, I skipped something here because I didn't see, but that is the 2025 operating budget work session dates. I wanted to wait till Ms. Harris was here so we can all can set some dates that are uh, complimentary for every everyone involved. So we issued the capital improvement plan on uh, 726. Um, so we would ideally like to intro, it's the same schedule we did last year, intro the budget at the second meeting in November, which was 1118 with action at the first meeting in December, which is December 2nd. And then Ms. that'll give Ms. Harris plenty of time to get everything in the system before year end. Is that enough time? Mm -hmm. So ideally, work session, we would like for that to be between October 7th and November 11th. And in between time, that's going to give uh, the administration a couple attempts to get down a solid product to present to council. 
So um, I don't know if you guys want to set that at this meeting or just kind of look at your calendars. We can discuss that maybe at the next meeting. But somewhere in those in that uh, October 11th to November 11th, I mean October 7th to November 11th is where we'd like to present with council. What's council's pleasure? Go ahead. Personally, I, I think the earlier the better because we really didn't get a chance to talk about anything in the CIP and I know others might be interested in stuff. I know I was and a few things, so I would want to not let her do all that hard work and then us say, well, we don't want this or that. Well, that's a, yeah, that's the whole point of doing the work sessions. You can look at the CIP and all of it together right. and see what you guys want for sure. I'm just saying you're not getting a heads up except for that little bit, but okay, that's fine. We had originally planned to do the uh, CIP at the next work session. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to interject that we have the vacant council seat and we've also got the clerk's position. I would like to see us interview the candidates at that same work session. Possibly I don't know how long that CIP will take. I don't think it'll take. So at the last meeting, what I suggested is we wait to this meeting to set that CIP work session date. It, August 26 had nothing to do with the CIP work session. That was for other things because I wanted to set the date while Ms. Harris was here. So I never intended to do the CIP at the 26th. And if I misspoke, I do apologize. But we don't have. If you guys want to do all the the your applications and all that good stuff, you're not going to have time to do that in the CIP. But the whole point of doing the CIP along with the budget, because remember I said we're not doing the resolution right when we did the CIP, because what happens is we go to the operating budget and realize we gotta cut this and this and this from the CIP. So what I mentioned at the last meeting was waiting to do it all in one swipe. When we sit down and talk about the budget, we can talk about the CIP, and then when we do the legislation, we can approve the resolution approving the CIP right before we do the ordinance approving the the uh, operating budget. Kathy, I'm going to take a word out of yours. You've got several things you'd like to look at at that CIP. I also do. I don't know whether any of the rest of the council has any questions in regard to the CIP. I personally would like to see uh, if we can get through these interviews very quickly to possibly touch on that CIP at that next work session. Mm -hmm. the, whole, the whole reason why we decided, why I wanted to wait to do the budget and the CIP together is because by the time we do the budget, you're already going to slash stuff from the CIP that you could have kept or could have not have kept. You might as well do your CIP when you have the working numbers for your operating budget in front of you. So the earlier you do it, Ms. Harris is not going to have a detailed picture of what that year is going to look like when the estimate. So that's what I explained the reason why we did not do the resolution along with the CIP when we when I emailed it to you. So you can look you can look at your CIP and look at the budget at the same time. Council pleasure. Can we uh if I go ahead the, uh, we have to notify put an ad in for the Work session. Uh, no, the uh, applications for council and uh, clerk, correct? They've already been in. Has that ad already been put in the paper? Yes. yes. To interview. Okay. When, when, uh, so, That's fine. when did it go into the paper? The ad the paper. for the, it ran on the 8th. Ran on the 8th? Yeah, so, September 6th. We, we could have a special meeting on Wednesday to do the interviews and appointments of both on this coming Wednesday if council so wanted to do that since the ad's already been in or has it been set a date in that ad for that? For your interviews, there yeah. has not been a date set. I will tell you I am only available on the 26th, the 3rd, and the 4th. I have open house. These next two weeks are crazy. So if if I need to be there to help with the voting well, procedures, we are running short on time of getting this appointment done. So uh, I think Wednesday the twenty first would be a good date to do the the uh, interviews, 
and then possibly an appointment after that of both positions. And uh, I'll put that in the form of motion if somebody wants to second it. Let me ask a question. If we have this meeting on the 21st, the next council meeting would be in September. September 3rd. We have to we have to have somebody by the end of this month or by, within 30 days of the resignation. It's 30 days from the date of publication. I thought. Pu publication. So that, that's September 6th. So September 6th. Yes, by September 6th. Go ahead, Peg. Why can't we just do it at the work session that we've already got scheduled on the 26th? I have no problem with that, and I think that would be the ideal situation. Then go ahead and make our announcement at the first meeting in September. That will put us within the time frame. Yeah, you have until September 6th. It'd be, the first meeting would be September 3rd. So September 3rd is when you guys would do the voting to appoint the, the applicant, right? If we if we do the interviews on the twenty sixth, it'll be September second. Are you done, Mayor Bernie? Yes, since I didn't get a second, I guess I am. Go ahead, Kathy. One question. Um, so if we do it on the twenty sixth, then we could vote on those people on the twenty or person on the twenty sixth. I just want to understand the process. Yeah, I think we could. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I don't mean, that's fine. <laughs> paying you back. Paying me back. That's fine. Would you probably go in for the work session? So if we could interview and yeah. then vote on them, but Just they wouldn't start until September 3rd, so I'd be we can't, we can't vote on them until the September 3rd meeting. Oh, oh, we can't vote during. And okay. then they'd be seated at September 3rd meeting. Gotcha. They can vote so that would be the first order of business. You can vote on the 26th. You can vote right? on the 26th. Yeah, I thought we could. Because it's advertised meeting. We could. I already, I placed the legal ad for the meeting just as a general. So do you want to call it a special meeting and then have us interview and then select the same night? You, it's up to you guys. She, she's, already, she's already posted the ad as a general no. meeting. No. She just said she did for the 26th. Yeah, I, yeah. I just did it. It was a... Because you guys really hadn't decided what was going on on the 26th, so it's just a general meeting. For this, yeah, whatever. I just, City business. I still have time to run the legal ad, anyways. If you, if we can put interviews. I can, can do another one. Right? So, so I, yeah. I, 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 give me a motion. Pardon me. Give me a motion. I already did. I move. We do it on the 26th instead of the 21st. Second. I have a motion and a second. Bye, Jimmy. Um, see Whichever. It, Who is it? <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. No matter. Not fast. Right, right. <laughs> Whoever. That'd be at this six? Is a... Yes. Yes. Yeah. So at like 15 minutes? I'm sorry. No, I think. Uh, it's, I know, okay. And this Dave is interviews? Is here. Mr. Rudolph is here. Mr. Lowry is here. Well, they all have Charlotte's to be here. Like, um, we're doing it on the 26th. Yeah. yeah. So I I'll think. Call it. Is the 26th all right with you folks? It doesn't matter, huh? It shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. I'll call everybody, too. Yeah. Give me a roll call. 6 p.m. My second was right. Uh, Councilman Lizzie. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> So are we, we're doing it individually, correct? We're going to do the it the 26th, way. and it's going to be a special meeting. Okay. Do you need any special gear set up or like the projector or anything? I wouldn't assume you would, but I don't think so. With that, we're, are you done, Mr. Bridge? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, committee reports. I don't believe we've got anything.
So I guess we'll go to comments from members of the public. You're limited five minutes or less. Please come up to the podium. Oops. <laughs> I'll get up here and probably forget what it was. Um, oh, one thing. He said something about letting him know about potholes and stuff that he thought they were done. But I know on Scott Street, where they've been working there, they did put up finally a sign that says rough, ho rough road. But they also should have put up a sign, big hole in this spot, because <laughs> it's like huge. And then all the way down, not all the way down, but halfway down the Scott there, I mean, it's got like big cracks in the middle. I don't know if you'd call that a pothole, but it's like it's separating. And I mean, I don't know if that's something they're wanting to fix now, but they said let them know, so I'm just letting you know. Um, and another thing, I just read on Facebook recently where over at the Car Car Carlisle Park that they've just done, that the kids have been in there spraying graffiti and foul language and stuff all over the, um, I guess the slide and the swings and everything, which they have been doing every time you go over there. And the parents on my street won't even let their kids go there because more of the bigger kids go over there and fight and do drugs. And, you know, we've spent all this money trying to fix this park up. I mean, I don't know what they can do. Someone suggested we start a GoFundMe and put cameras up in there. I don't know. It didn't sound like a bad idea, but I just don't know what they can do, do with that because that's been going on for years over there that way. Until I agree with you, um, Chair Janelle, I'm sorry. I agree wholeheartedly with you. The only problem is that basically I'm sure that probably in the hours of the evening when this is going on, we've got one patrolman on duty. And it becomes a problem in being everywhere at once. Um, I don't have any real good suggestions. Maybe Mr. Bridge can enlighten the officers to possibly swing by there a few more times. Yeah. Uh, and Mr. Kitko can maybe take a look at Scott and see if there's anything that we can do in the interim for a patch to get you out of square one. Okay. Yeah, I know where the pole is, so I can... Well, it isn't where you would probably just run right into it easily, but, I mean, it is big, so... Um, is there any way they can put cameras there? I don't know. So they can see who's been doing this? We've looked at or it before. To catch anybody? Uh, or? Cameras, it's just, uh, cameras, you can't really, you have a hard time identifying people through cameras. They're usually so covered up. I don't want to sound like I'm making excuses, but this is exactly what happens. Um, what else can you add to that? Some technical stuff about the distance and the power options, correct? Yeah, I met with a contractor uh, that deals with this type of stuff from Columbus and Cincinnati cameras. And it comes down to your power locations, and it gets expensive to try and get some, not, I don't mean facial recognition as in like FBI stuff, yeah. but being able to see and have enough of them around. Most of our parks just have Cobra lights. We don't have uh, internet. Sometimes they'll have to run that, and it's basically a whole setup like we have in the building with all these cameras. It has to be out there somewhere. And to be able to get the whole internet, it was thousands and of dollars you know okay. not like getting your little Amazon one that you have on your shed that just wouldn't work for us we need something better but yeah they were I met met a guy out at Willowick Park to just start that conversation about <laughs> park cameras and mm -hmm. yeah it was it was quite expensive okay does anyone know if that's been cleaned up I know I thought they said when they got the new yeah. new things in it would be some kind of paint or something that they could get that stuff off they said on the old ones because I had asked about them cleaning up before, and they said they couldn't because it, they couldn't get it off. But can they do that now, and did they do it? Yeah, it happened on that Saturday, mm -hmm. and by Sunday morning, um, one of our crews, we have someone come in every every weekend in the morning from street department now, and they took care of it that, that, mor that next morning. Okay, good. I just, you know, I hadn't heard anything about yep. it. So I, I just think there does seem to be some need for some kind of patrol. Even not with that, but with the older kids being over there and, and all the fighting and bullying that's going on and, and, and drugs, I've heard. I, I don't know, but I know the, a lot of the parents won't let their kids go there. Well, so. I think that the little ones, I mean. If you've been watching the news, 
I think, was it Kettering that had a water pump station that was vandalized a while back with paint and all kinds of, the same situation yeah. that we've got. So it's not a problem that's unique in our area. It's all over the place, I guess. In some aspects, some people may say the kids don't have anything else to do, <laughs> which we've heard do. for many, many years. <laughs> yeah. Well, than that, Kathy, you have... Well, I think it's along that same line as to... Uh, we want to let the older kids have something to do. It's not that they don't have anything to do. It's that they go to the park, want to do something, and what is there to do? You either play on the little swingies like little babies, which that's the way 12-year-olds look at it, or you do something that's kind of cool. And if we don't have something that's kind of cool, is there, well, yeah, you know, that is pretty cool. The little drawings are cute. And I think until we give the kids that are a little bit older something to do, we're just going to keep facing that, and we're still going to face it. When I was a child, they were painting on stuff. The paintings weren't as mature as they are now. But, yeah. <laughs> and the drug issues, the needles and stuff, that's a problem. I would like to see if we did anything for safety would be to have a call box so that we could have them pick up a number that would dial straight to the police or the fire and have them come and pick up safely a needle that was there. So we don't have an adult grabbing or a child grabbing a needle that doesn't need to be. I think a call box at the parks might be a really good help and maybe help people feel safer there. I don't know. Okay. I think that's all I had. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Janelle. Good evening. Um, about the marijuana shop in town, I am against it. Uh, name and address, ma'am. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Rhonda Manaman, 317 North Adams. What was your name, ma'am? Rhonda Manaman, oh, okay. 317 North Adams. We don't sell alcohol in town. I don't think we should sell marijuana in town. Um, I've looked at the map on the Ohio um, State, I think it's the Commerce page or something. Um, within the corner of where Miami County, Clark County, Montgomery County meet, um, there's nothing within that wide area. So there's potential for drawing quite a bit of that kind of business into town. Um, I don't think we need to put that underneath the noses of our underage people. We know they find a way to get it. I don't want to help them get it by putting it in town and making it easy for them to come to. Um, there also is not a test currently like there is for alcohol and the breathalyzer to have a threshold, a measurement, and a weight of measurement of what is under the influence for marijuana. So until there's some kind of a test for marijuana like there is for alcohol, I'm always going to be against it. The other concern I have is um, I've seen some things online, so subject to interpretation and accuracy. Um, but um, quoting the Dayton Daily News for one, issue two also explicitly notes that it does not require nor prohibit any public place from accommodating an individual's use of cannabis. That allows for a local government to do exactly what they've done with alcohol and the door provisions, the designated outdoor refreshment areas. Um, another quote from the journal, um, can I smoke marijuana in public? No. That law prohibits people from smoking plant material in enclosed areas open to the public with exceptions for outdoor patios, smoke shops, and hotel rooms designated for smoking. Public use beyond that is less clear. Using marijuana in quote unquote public places could land someone with a minor misdemeanor, but it also says property owners in any public place could decide for themselves whether to accommodate marijuana use. So whether you put a shop in town, we need to have some rules in town about public use of marijuana, whether they buy it here or not. I try to buy in person as much as possible rather than online. I try to buy in town or in the immediate area as possible. But I guarantee you, if I have to walk through a cloud of marijuana smoke to get to a local town, to come to Smith Park, to walk downtown, to go to the gas station, anywhere, I'm going to go elsewhere where I don't have to walk through that. 
So to me, this seems like our opportunity to see how other communities are addressing this and to see if we can do something similar. Hey, Ron, I got a question for you. Are you against the recreational or medicinal? Because of the misuse that has been reported for the medicinal, I'm against selling that in town too. We've seen many, many things on the news about how easy it is to find a doctor that doesn't even look at you when you go in and write you a script. No testing, no you know, proof of your need. I believe that there are conditions that medical marijuana is helpful. I, I do believe that. Um, again, it's, it's not managed the way that it needs to be. We have on the agenda an ordinance with providing a moratorium on marijuana shops in town on the agenda tonight. And I believe that it addresses recreational marijuana rather than medicinal, if I'm not correct. <coughs> Am I correct on that? We're doing recreational and not medicinal? Yes. If it's voted on tonight. That's what the ordinance is on the book tonight. Mm -hmm. so. so what do you think about the public use concerns, whether they can buy it here or not? Um, is this information true that there's loopholes in issue two about whether people can use it in public? I personally, I believe that this ordinance, as far as recreational, will pass this body tonight. Now, the medicinal, that's something that was not included in this ordinance. And unless somebody brings it up and instructs the city manager to bring us over another ordinance, mm -hmm. that's a separate issue. In the research that you've done so far, do you know what local communities are doing? What, what's in place in Tip City or Troy or? Most of them are. Uh, putting a moratorium on the recreation and not the medicinal. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so if that ordinance passes as it stands, then you would allow a medicinal shop to set up in town to sell. That is the way the ordinance reads, yes. Okay. And so are they allowed to smoke in public? Now that, I... That's, that's part of the question with whether we need to have a DORA or not is... It's not just buying it, but it's using it. And what is a public place? That's the, that's the second part of my concern. Again, I think that's going to be a legal question because the moratorium, as I understand it, is for a shop and the sale of recreational marijuana. However, if somebody comes in town <coughs> and decides to stand and light up, I think that's a legal problem with the sheriff's department. Well, that was the, um, sorry, the attorney that was quoted in the Dayton Daily News. <clears throat> attorney Rob Scott, clerk for uh, Kettering Municipal Court, this is from the Dayton Daily News, is the one that's saying it allows for local government to do exactly what they've done. Ohio is a home rule state that gives local governments additional autonomy by default. And so without there being a test for marijuana, it seems to me that the burden is on our deputies about, you know, does that person act like they're under the influence? I would not be able to, I guess the word is, legally answer that. Uh, I would assume that that would be a question for the law director. Uh, the summary that I, the ORC that I summaried from you states in multiple areas that it cannot be consumed in public. And I want people to understand that, and I understand what you're, where you're coming from, mm -hmm. but the issue tonight should be on council. Do you want people to buy it here or not? You're not banning it, people bringing it into your city. So where are they smoking enough is going to happen whether you have a, 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 a recreation, a, a, a dispensary or not. Mm -hmm. So that should come after the fact. We should focus on do you want to be able to buy it, recreational here or not. The state, I do believe, when was that article dated that you're referring to? 
I don't know. Well, there's a lot of misinformation back in 23, early 24, and then I think they've cleared some things out. Mm -hmm. But the summary I, I thought in there, I thought I read multiple times, it says public consumption is not permitted, you can't do it in your car. So whatever loophole they're going through right now, I'm not privy to know. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, the focus should be on do you want it to sell in here or not because you can't ban it from coming in through your, your city limits. Um, now, with that being said, I mean, if you have a dispensary on Church Street, I mean, on Main Street, it's going to just add, you know, fuel to the fire. But you're still not, this ban's not going to keep people from coming in and out of your city with it. Okay. So, so, so it, it would have to be a separate discussion and a separate action by council if you want to define what a public area is that's my understanding of this we would have to define what a public area is and say that its use is you know not permitted there and that should come regardless if they pass the dispensary ban or not yes. if you look at that memorandum i put you guys one of the second page second bullet point is next steps research what local code you guys want to put in place Okay, I think I understand. Well, I thank hope you. We've answered your question, Robert. As best as you can, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Rodewald. I just want to talk to you real quick. Give me my address, Bill. Yeah. 1014 Westlake Avenue. Uh, first, I want to give Howie and Randy uh, kudos for the uh, pickleball court. Looks fantastic. Um, great, great addition to the parks. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't going to talk about the marijuana legislation tonight, but I, I'm going to have to. Um, for the almost four years I sat here, previous years listening to council, talking to citizens, all I hear about is business. We want business. We want business. And when there's an opportunity to bring business, whether you agree with it or not, what their business is, we're shutting our doors once again to business. Um, Marijuana, I don't partake in it, but I don't care, is, is, is no addict, more addictive than, than alcohol, which we sell at every grocery store, every gas station, and every pharmacy in town. Um, it's no more addictive than what those pharmacies sell, whether it's Vicodin, Oxycodine, anything, which all is prescribed. And you can walk into any doctor and get a prescription, fairly simple. Uh, backache, knee hurts, there you go. Send you on your way. Um, the marijuana for the state, if you look at their projected revenues that it will bring not only to the state of Ohio, but the municipalities who embrace it. I'm not saying let's just all be free birds and let's go out here and roll a doobie and go smoke one. Um, but the times of let's be afraid of what we don't know we, needs to stop. Um, it goes back to the whole alcohol ban. You know, it took forever for the city to get alcohol inside sales. Did it change anything? Has anything changed when it comes to alcohol inside with city sales? No. Last year we tried to get a, a, a initiative on the on the ballot for for serving alcohol, and the boogeyman came back out. Oh, that's just that's that's the next step to the devil. You know, they're going to drink, they're going to drive. Guys, they already drink and drive. You know, we're just we're we're chasing business away. You know, yes, we get some McDonald's, we get a Taco Bell. Um, those are small, small pockets. What what the city needs to grow with what's projected coming in the next seven to ten years. Um, so you know, we we as a city and as a council and as an administration, we need to start looking outside the box, opening our minds, not being scared of what was the boogeyman in the '50s and the '60s. What 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 is on the board now? Um, Marijuana is no more addictive, no more dangerous than, than the Bud Light I may drink on a Saturday night. But what it does do, it brings in a revenue source that could be not life changing, but could add to a very, very good bottom line and continue to grow. And it shows other businesses, hey, we're open. You know, come talk to us. Let's see what we can do as a community, as a city. And I wasn't going to talk about that. I just want to come and give Howie and Randy kudos for the new pickleball court. I mean, that's two years in the making. I remember when we had those conversations two years ago. Um, looks great. Um, the park on Carlisle looks fantastic. Um, streets are looking good. Can't wait to see the street sweeper in action. 
Um, so keep it up. Guys, you're doing a great job. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Willow, thank you for your yes, comments. Sir. Anyone else? Come on, Janelle. I'll break the rules. Oh, I didn't know if there was. A, I didn't know that rule was there. Uh, Janelle Zimmerman, two nineteen Prentice. I just wanted to say that I am against recreational marijuana. I'd be for um, the prescription, selling prescription, but I am against that, especially especially if they're going to be selling products that look like cookies and candy and. The stuff they show on TV that kids could so easily get, get into. Of course, I know that that's up to the parents and supervision and stuff. But I just think I just want to say I was against it. So, thank you, Jill. <laughs> I call on owners who own marijuana shops, and I know the the hoops that they've had to go through. And I can promise you, and I know, I know the people who probably wouldn't want to open this one. The odds of them selling to under someone under the age of 21 is zero. Mm -hmm. the, the legality and what they would put at risk if they got caught selling to someone under the age of 21, it, it, it's not worth making that 10 or $12 sale. It's not. I know, like I said, I have seven customers who own multiple marijuana shops. And I can prompt none of them. It's not like cigarettes. It's not like alcohol. Even now, if you sell cigarettes or alcohol to a minor, the license with the state is all tied into one now. So if they, they sell alcohol to a minor, they put their cigarette license, they put their lottery license, and they put their alcohol license all at risk. Marijuana, it's even worse. It, it, it actually comes with jail time if you get caught selling to either an underage or someone who doesn't have a prescription card. So, you know, it's not the old days where I could go down to Scotty's drive through and buy an 18-pack when I was 19 years old. It's not that way no more. You, I mean, if anyone buys alcohol through a dollar journal, you have, to, you have to give them your ID now. I mean, I had to Saturday. I'm 49 years old. So I had to get my ID. It's the same thing there. There is no transaction without a proper state-issued ID. And then they scan it into the system, and the system will tell you if it's fake, it'll tell you it's fake. And then by law, they have to notify the police if they have someone come in with a fake ID trying to buy marijuana. So it's, it's, there's a lot more regulations and there's a lot more oversight. And I'm just saying, guys, just don't be afraid of what, what is, what is it? Inevitable. It's coming. It's going to come. Why turn away the money that can be made there? Because you just don't have all the facts, or you, you, you let someone scare you. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. I have a question for Mr. Rivera. Uh, you said that uh, something about a prescription, isn't that just for medicinal that you need a script for? Yes. The other, you can go in if you're 21 and above and buy, I think it's up to two ounces. Yeah, there. it's two ounces. It's, it's There's some edibles. I mean, yeah. and here's the thing, guys. I mean, you still have to show ID. Yeah, oh, yeah. They're yeah. Not gonna, you can't, you even, can't even get, you in, can't the even get in the door without it. Like, so when you walk into one, there, there's, a, there's, there's an entry door, mm -hmm. and then there's a, right there is the waiting room. And before you ever even go to go see any of any of the products. You, you know, you have to show them your ID, they scan it, and some of them even do background checks to make oh, wow. sure you're not a, a, a class one fella. Um, and when it comes to, you know, the gummies and the, and the brownies and everything, guys, I can go to the marathon right now and buy CBD gummies. I can go buy CBD brownies. The only difference between CBD and, and, and regular marijuana is CBD doesn't have the THC in it. It's the same plant. It just has one ingredient taken out. You know, and just because they sell a gummy, you know, a lot, a lot of people can't smoke. They can't inhale. They can't, you know, so it's easier for them to take a gummy, to eat a brownie. My mother does it. My mother is a cancer survivor four times over. You know, my mom is the biggest pothead I know. Um, <laughs> you just said that on the public. It's fine. Yeah, she'll agree with me. But the bad thing is, is you know, I mean, she has a prescription and she gets it, but, you know, she can't smoke. So she eats the gummies. Well, the only reason I asked the question, because you said a, a prescription, mm -hmm. so I wanted you to clarify. Yes, no. This one is a prescription, but the yeah. marijuana, you the have to The recreational. Marijuana. Yeah, you have to be. It's just like buying a pack of cigarettes. Exactly. But it, there's a few more steps. Yeah, or you know. beer. Yes. Yep, or beer. 
You know, I mean, the only thing you can buy now at 18 is lottery. You, you know, you know, back in the old days, you're like, oh, I'm turning 18. Now you have okay. everything. Now you can't buy anything but lottery. Yeah, but it was three two beer, and you know what it Oh, Bill, I mean, you know, I'm old, but, but I don't remember three two beer. <laughs> so, yeah. thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rudolph. There is one more thing I'll add to this, since you all are getting fact finding. Um, I do know, like, if you go to get a medicinal card and you have a conceal and carry, they won't issue your medicinal card if you carry a gun. So by allowing the recreational dispensary, it may have someone have access to the same type of medicine without having to get that restriction on the carry. Does that make sense? They can get it recreational, but they can't get it through medicinal. The only difference between the two products is potency, and which is not very different between the two, and then the excise tax that the state's going to put on. So someone who wanted, who has a concealed carry, who's been not been able to get their medicinal card because they want to, now they'll still have access to the product, just not through the medicinal side of things. Anyone else? Okay, if not, I guess we'll go to the resolution and ordinance section. Put this here just in case my computer is about to die. I'm afraid it's gonna. Thank you. Okay, so tonight we have a lot of things. We have resolution 2024-09R. Introduction tonight. Public hearing in action is tonight. That's just a misprint. So. Move to accept. I haven't read it yet. Hold on just I a second. Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. All right. A resolution accepting the official certificate of estimated resources for 2025, along with the tax year 2025 rates and amounts certification from the Clark County Budget Commission. Move to accept. Second. Sorry. Was it Shammy? Yeah. Okay. Any discussion? Well, listen on. Sorry about that. The action's nine three. No, it's it's tonight. It's tonight. It's action is tonight. That's just a. It's a it's a misprint. We do apologize. Uh, explanation of this resolution. This is a yearly housekeeping one that we do. Uh, this will start our overall 2025 budget process um, by certifying some of these rates. There we go. All right, Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. That passes 6 0. Our next one is Resolution 2024 10 R, a resolution establishing the Street Sweeper 2024 Bond Fund. So moved. Shammy Eggleston? Uh, explanation of this resolution. This will create the fund uh, that Ms. Harris can use to receive and expend the bond proceeds. <coughs> Any comments? Good. All right. Second was Eggleston. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Yeah. Moving on to ordinances, we have ordinance 2024-39. This was introduced on August 5th, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of de-icing rock salt. So moved. Second. Lindsay Shammy. Uh, explanation of this or, uh, ordinance will let Mr. Kiko uh, explain. Uh, through the uh, SWAT 4G purchasing group, uh, they put out for bids back in June, July for de icing salt for the 24 25 winter, which came in at $61.56 per ton. This is a savings from, um, I think it was close to $80 per ton, so we'd see a decrease for this year. They also have bidding for next year, so you'll probably see this ordinance about this time next year for that second part of their agreement. Go ahead, Ken. Can you repeat that last sentence? 
Is it for two years? This is for one year, but they bid for two. So in case something changes, I didn't. We didn't do a resolution covering both years. So I'll be bringing another resolution next year to to okay. accept the second year. Okay, yeah, that last part. Oh. Sorry. That's okay. Whatever happened to our brine solution? You guys have talked about that for many many years, but nothing ever came of it. And we've also tried a mm -hmm. truck bed brine tank mm -hmm. and everything, and we just had we've we've had problems with it because we don't use it a lot. And as you know, salt has that calcium come out of it, and we just constantly unplug in holes just for what we do. We don't run it a lot. So basically, we run it when that snow melts, and we create our own. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, Mr. Kiko, how many times do you plan on buying this year? Well, we bid out 300, and let's just hope uh, we have another seasonable year. And, and we've only use it. Yeah, we've only purchased the last couple of years 100 each year. Okay. Yep. Do you bid out three hundred? We always bid out three because there's been years we've been okay. over three before. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Anyone else? No. That's okay. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. That passes six zero. We have ordinance 2024-40. This was introduced on August 5th, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance determining to proceed with the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio by lighting them. So moved. So moved, second. Shammy Lindsay. Uh, explanation of this ordinance. This is a yearly housekeeping ordinance. This is the first step in assessing for the street lighting. Any comments? Go ahead, Kathy. I, I have a question. I was curious what the assessment is this year. Is it per foot? How much money? Or is, is, uh, is according to Ordinance 2024-41, it is 60 cents per, per front foot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did we save money on our LED lights we put in? Um, not as much as you would think. Yeah, I was kind of curious about that because when we went to LED, we saved a lot of money, and mm -hmm. I wondered why the streets didn't save money doing that. Well, they paid for most of the insulation. They didn't charge charges for that, so they'll eat that back in that probably. Are they done? Are we done paying for all that installation? Well, we we paid it up front, but we're getting ready to renew that contract here in December. So we'll know our new rates then. In when? In December. In December. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good question. Great question. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Go ahead, Bill. On the rates, Mr. Bridge, is that just for the city or is that for the entire city for residents also? It's, it's for the city if you have street lights on your street. Okay. So right. if you don't have street lights okay. like Twin Creek. Well, yeah. yeah, I wanted to clarify that. Is that all? Thank you. Sure. Anyone else? Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Pass six zero. We have ordinance 2024-41. This was introduced on August 5th, public hearing in action tonight. And ordinance levying assessments for the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio by lighting them. So moved. Second. Who have whatever. Pick <laughs> one. What is it? Yeah, either one. Shammy Lindsay. Yeah. Sounds Speak up. I can't hear you down there. <laughs> Um, explanation of, we got to both. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Explanation of this ordinance. This is the second of the street lighting ordinance, and this uh, will detail um, the rates and then authorizes the city to actually assess. Any further? Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Pass is 6 0, Ordinance 2024 42. This was introduced on August 5th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain delinquent utility accounts for collection with real estate taxes. So, what are you doing? Second. Lindsay Shammy. An explanation of this ordinance. This is also a yearly uh, house ordinance that we do, and this will uh, put the uh, past due water accounts 
uh, as liens onto their uh, property taxes. Go ahead again. Yeah, I noticed some of those are very large accounts, and I was wondering because it seems like whenever anybody gets like a hundred dollars overdue, they shut you off. So I'm curious how they got to be three and four and five thousand dollars past two. Uh, these just they water haven't. Water no, they well, they, thousand feet waterly. Waterly. Water it was more than that. Oh, the sewer. I don't know. This is the sewer only. Mm -hmm. We can't shut them off. It's the sewer only. If that's what. Squire. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. 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 This is an unpaid bill. Huh? It's an unpaid bill for sewer. I just don't know how that hap how did that happen is what I'm guess I'm asking. Is it old old bill or well, more than likely they what where would be a scenario? They're within a really? calendar year, but we can't shut off sewer. If it's a sewer only. Oh account. you can't shut off. So it sewer. just accumulates yeah. every month, every month, every month. Oh, and we only have one. Uh, the water accounts are attached. We do shutoffs, and that okay. controls. Well, uh, the list I saw was large. There was like ten that had very large, and I don't know. Then maybe it wasn't water. Yeah, that's um, the grass or something. I think you're on the grass one. This is just yeah. we only have one sewer account. Okay, so I understand. So you can't shut off sewer. So because they didn't call you and turn it off, because they're just not paying. It just goes every month, and the past dues and the late fees and everything. So they're just not paying their bill. You can you can shut water off. The water can't come in their house anymore because they haven't paid. But right. you can't. With the city can't stop them from putting stuff down their sink, which is your the sewer. Sewer. Right. We can't shut that off. But can't they're not going to be shutting or putting a thousand gallons worth of anything down their sewer. I don't know what they're logically down their sewer. they won't be. Go These ahead. are properties north of town that only have sewer. So okay. it's buried super deep when it was put back in the in the mid '90s, and there's not what they consider a shut off. So they live out there with really no no I don't call it consequences, but they can move out. They just don't pay, don't pay, and then sell their home, and then they 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 just leave. Okay, so there's this no, only applies out of city houses, really. Is that what you're saying? Not necessarily, but it just so happens this is the only one this year. Okay, all right. Anything further? If not, Mrs. Burn. All right. Shammy was the second. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman oh, Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. All right. The next one is Ordinance 2024-43, but it's actually, it got flip-flopped, so I'm going to read what is under 45. Okay. You're okay. reading G. She's reading G. Yeah. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected weed and or grass cutting fees for collection with real estate taxes. So, uh, Jamie? Uh-huh. Second. You want to clear up on? Mr. Mount, Mr. Mount, Mr. Mount. Yep. We're, we're on 44, correct? No, I move. It's or uh, move down numbers. to uh, G. We've got the wrong numbers on. You're flipping G and E. Um, I think she said G should be 20, 24, 45. Or, I'm sorry. 42. 43. <laughs> Get it right in a minute. All you need to do is switch E and G. Okay, are you clear? Yeah, I, she said 45, and I thought we were on 43. <clears throat> the ordinance you're reading is Ordinance 43. Right. It's just labeled as 45 on the agenda. Okay. So that's if you want we're to follow to. along, go look at 45. First and oh, on 43, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Um, this is a yearly housekeeping uh, ordinance we do, similar to the water liens, but these are for uh, grass cutting assessments. So I already have the first and second. Oh, you got a first that and second? was his explanation, <coughs> yep. Am right. I good to call it? I have a question, <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Yes. Question. I'm reading on 143, well, right? Uh, it says uh, in excess of six inches. Didn't we pass the ordinance to, so it could be eight inches? 
We did, but this is from last year, so next year. This is last year's yep. okay. Yep. All right. Great observation. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, any other comments? Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. That passes six zero. We have Ordinance 2024-44. This was introduced on August 5th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance establishing a moratorium on adult use cannabis operators within the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. So moved. Second. Give it up. Jamie. Jamie Lindsay. Uh, explanation of this ordinance. It will put a, a ban for one year on recreational dispensaries. Any comment? Vice Mayor Eggleston. No. Mayor Cook. No. Councilman Bond. <coughs> yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. I'm, I'm yes. Here. Yes. Right. Councilwoman Wright. No. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Three to three. Okay. <laughs> Ends in tie. What do we do? It's Motion died. died. Motion died. 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 Or the ordinance died, excuse me. Go ahead, Ms. Burr. All right, moving on. Sorry, my so laptop died. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so used to doing it. I know. It. I'm sorry. So that one died. Oh. Yeah. So now we're on. Okay. I have ordinance 2024-45, an ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance 2023-61. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Sorry. Which one is it? A motion and a second. Mr. Bridge. This is 45. Second. We're in the supplemental. Yeah. Supplemental. Yeah. Uh, this. yeah. Sure. Yeah. Explanation of this ordinance. This is a uh, not a housekeeping ordinance, but sometimes we have to look at that budget and supplement certain appropriations, and that's what we have in front of council tonight. Any comment? Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Passes 6 0. Okay. Sorry. Ordinance 2024 46, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on September 3rd. So the rest are. Yeah, just read only. An ordinance amending section 1060.99 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding garbage and rubbish, rubbish collection and disposal. Ordinance 2024-47, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on September 3rd. An ordinance amending chapter 648 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle to address unmanned aircraft systems. Ordinance 2024-48, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on September 3rd. An ordinance amending chapter 248 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding city policy. And other business, we have movie night, which will be cars on August 24th, 2024 at dusk here at Smith Park. Um, and it's open for any city related business discussions. Go ahead and read that. Read the rest one. Okay. Um, the city offices are going to be closed on Monday, September 2nd, 2024, to observe Labor Day. Mr. Bond. Um, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a couple questions. Uh, Mr. Bridge, maybe you can shed some light on, please. Originally, I think D.R. Horton had told us when they were building those houses they were going to be like mid three hundred thousand dollar houses. 
It went from like 285 to like the 300s, the 320s. And now their sign is saying upper 200s or whatever. So are they just going to keep bringing, the, are we getting smaller houses? Are we? I don't think, it, I don't know if it's a smaller houses. They did approach me about a single car garage where there's nothing against our code that says that. Um, I don't know if the cost materials are going down. That's the only thing I can really logically think of. Um, but I have not been told of any smaller footprint houses. They're still going to have a plethora of houses to choose from. So uh, I don't know if like they have a group of 12 houses, maybe the smallest one's going to be that and the highest one's going to be a different price range because each model has different features, I'm assuming. Um, but as far as a complete reduction in square footage, I, I haven't been told. I was a little concerned that we were going to end up all at once with really lower, lower income housing than what we originally sure. you know, thought was coming. So sure. um, I just thought that's something we probably ought to keep an eye on. The other is the cut through road mm -hmm. that originally um, we had talked about doing up at like near the feed store there or whatever, mm -hmm. but then had talked about moving it down. Mm -hmm. Has there been any more discussion on that? Uh, no, funny you bring that up. So we have re engaged uh, Choice One because they wanted to put a natural gas, uh, what is that, a, a connector thing? What is that thing? A, a gas riser like in front of Bancrest. Is that little mini pipe gallery? So we had to we had to have them move the cut through if it was going to be up north a little bit further north. Um, we still have not got back the study that we had done lining up IGA. Um, we crossed base with them. Hopefully, we'll have that back next couple of weeks. Okay. The only reason I ask is because um, I had talked with uh, Mr. White. Mm -hmm. He said the power company had approached him about putting a substation in there, and he was that. and he was trying to figure out his. Mm -hmm. Is one group trying to do something, another group doing something? Are they talking, or is this going to be, mm -hmm. you know, something? Um, so that was Center Point Energy. I have spoke with the lady out of Troy. Uh, so they had approached her just to put an easement in. And like I said, it's that little mini pipe gallery. It's not the building, like, across from the License Bureau. Uh, okay. Nothing like that. It's just a few risers with a regulator. And then the main from there would go over to Monroe Meadows, and then the main would go over and feed D.R. Horton. Um, and so they need a 15 foot wide easement. Well, obviously they just approached uh, the whites uh, and said, hey, we need an easement from you. And she had said, hey, they're looking at a road as well. So then they make contact with us and we approach Choice One and say, hey, if they're gonna put this in, do we still have room for, if that is the preferred way for a road, but yeah. That's, I was just concerned that, yeah, two groups weren't talking and everybody's making plans and yep. then we end up with a an issue so good I'm glad you guys are on top of that my other question goes to the uh, comprehensive plan for the mm -hmm. city that we've kind of brushed on here and there yeah is that <laughs> something that the planning director could work with us on and we could help facilitate like through a work session we could give ideas on what we want and then the planning director could put that together and work with us to get that put together uh, yeah but I would highly recommend we have a professional come in to do these comp plans like we've had before. Um, when you do them in-house, they tend to get what they are now, kind of elementary. Um, you want to have some really advanced planning staff to really work with you on that. Um, we could never do in-house like the example we gave out for City Beat. It's just, we cannot. Right, yeah, that one looks great. It's but, great, yeah. you know, and you want these things to be solid. So just take a look at our one we did back in 2012 that was in-house and compare it to the City Beat and you're gonna get your quality difference there. Uh, we can start it in-house, but I think any kind of in-depth analysis, kind of, in, and definitely that final report is definitely going to, I would recommend coming from an actual, you know, con uh, consultant or whoever. It doesn't have to be the same gentleman we just used. There are plenty, plenty of people out there. Sure, there but most of when they do their comp plan, a lot of cities do not do that in-house. It's just a, it's complicated. I just thought, yeah, to make yeah. save cost and mm -hmm. utilize his job and, and gifts yeah. and abilities, maybe we could... Uh, I, you know, do I think, that to help move the ball forward. Oh, absolutely. I think for the starting point, I think it's a great idea. But the final product, I think definitely that, that professional who's geared into that. Uh, I think that's all You're I done? Have. I am. Anybody else? Go, go ahead. Kim. I'd like to follow along with Mr. Bond. I think that's an excellent idea. If we could get that scheduled, I'd like to get it done sooner than later. I think that's really important in moving forward with our town. If we could get with the planning director or whatever he's called and so i'll go over our fall winter schedule there's some big ticket items i wanted to work on um, okay. and then see if we can squeeze them in for you guys 
but again, I just want to stress you can start the process with that, but any kind of final, final, final version of it, I would highly recommend. Sure. You know, some professionals coming in. But I really, really you know, I want to start it. However, we can start it so fast. Okay, everybody then. With a little bit of the situation that came to light recently, I think we need to get that comprehensive plan uh, probably put on the books very shortly here. And that's in reference to that conversation you and I had. I have been telling you guys all last year that I had budgeted for that uh, plan for 2025, and that's going to be the same thing we talked about a couple months ago. So that's my agenda item is to look at that for your 2025 operating budget. You got to, especially if you're going to hire a contractor come in and do that, you want to budget it out. Um, if you guys want it done before then, just uh, we have to do another supplemental, and then we'll let Ms. Harris look at find some ways in the money to do that. But right now the budget's kind of shot for the year. That's why we have the supplemental in front of you guys tonight. If you guys want to rush and get it done before year's end, you can make the motion to do that. We'll just have to get the ball rolling and do a supplemental to pay for that. But again, I've stressed <clears throat> for the past couple years, we're looking at that for 2025. This is not something you start and get done in a week or two. It's a very long driven process. You got to get public involvement with it. It is just a very time consuming stuff. You can always get the ball started rolling. But like I said, any kind of thing that requires money to it, we'll have to look at our budget because right now we are running really tight with the funds we've allocated for the year. But again, we can always do a supplemental. That'd be your guys' decision. If, if nobody has any comments in regard to that I'll make a motion that we start that process ASAP and uh, get it on the books as soon as possible I don't need a motion sir you don't need a motion no nope. okay. so you just want me to fast track yes. anything prior to what we, we planned out just scrap all that and move forward quicker Yes, if we have to make a supplemental move on the appropriation, I have no problem with that. Okay. I think we need to uh, get a direction of which way we're going post haste. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Oh, I'm ahead. sorry. Uh, yeah, um, I do want to do it post haste, but I just think that maybe by the time we're actually needing money, we might be into 2025. And you literally may not need to throw it away. It's just that if we start it now, then we know we'll be in line for getting it for 2025. Okay. Bill, you had some. How much money are we talking to move this forward before January? I haven't started Any? getting quotes because we've always said we're going to do it in 2025. So I was going to start my quote process here in the next month or two when okay. I do my other quotes for 2025. What? <clears throat> Give me a ballpark. I, I don't even the, know, sir. I don't head. want to speculate. It depends on who you get. I, out. I, I don't know. I'm not going to speculate. I don't know. Your retreat was, what, 6000 Yeah. This is going to be far more than that because it's way more complicated and, 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 and intricated and a lot more analysis and a lot more involvement. Like I said, you got public input and all that stuff. So I don't know. I mean, I, I like I said, I don't want to speculate because I don't know if you guys are going to end up doing in-house and being okay with it. If you do that, you can do it relatively cheap. If you guys want to actually take it and get it done professionally done, it could it could cost some money. But, but we could start it in house and then go to go to a, a professional, right? Let him see what we've done. Yeah, I just don't know what you guys are going to do to start it in house. That's why you need that professional to kind of guide you along, seeing this is the big components of it. This is how you want to start. Similar to how Pete did our retreat, he had exercises for you guys to do. You know, so I'd be hard pressed to find one entity that's done their comprehensive land use plan in house that's has a good product. Because you gotta understand now the comprehensive use plan we have now is what I use to guide our development mm -hmm. and I get a lot of backlash when I follow our comprehensive land use plan. So <clears throat> if you guys want it to be stricter, you need to make it stricter. If you wanna cap your growth, if you want to cap your annexations, now's the time to do it in that particular. Mm -hmm land use plan but like I said um, we have an actual I don't want to put you on the spot have you guys ever done one in-house yeah, what and what's yeah, what, what's the size of, what's the size of your entity 60,000 thank you we did do it in-house um, but we had an extremely talented person 
let it. Who it was like his baby, you know. So yeah. He put his whole life into it. So it's just tough when we're so small and you need that. You need that professional thing. I mean, the comprehensive plan is your one binding document. You want to have solid. So, so we could we could theoretically have have a professional maybe sometime between now and the end of the year lined up for January, and that would fall within the 25 budget, correct? Yeah, I mean it would. But it, a lot of those, but to see how they write the the term, some of them require 50 percent up now then 50 percent upon completion. But right. uh, if we have to do another supplemental, we'll just give it to Ms. Harris if we could do another supplemental. She I mean, that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> She's Fresh frowning shirt. over there. Yeah, well. I mean, okay. Mm. I just, some different ideas, you know. I'll second you, Bill. If, no, I think you needed a second. No, he didn't need a motion. Oh, he said no, he didn't he, want he that. Okay, that's right. Are we done for now? I, Mike wanted to say something. Did you not? I I wanted to save it to the end just in case. Uh, Mike Lowry, 16 Plumwood Drive. So we all know the small towns like Xenia, New Carlisle, Medway are all built around you know really great families of the community and well-known people. Um, and Peg, I'll do my best not to tear up talking to you about this. I'm really sorry for your loss of your brother. Uh, Bruce was a great person. The Eggleston family is a very well-known uh, uh, name and family to New Carlisle. Uh, they've done so much for the community. Bruce is an extremely talented person. Uh, it was a shame that he passed so, so unex mm, excuse me, unexpectedly. Um, but the town is a better place for you, your family, your brothers, your sisters. Uh, we, the town would not be what it is without you and your family, so thank you. Along with that, I will reiterate and thank the members of the council and the administration that showed up at Mr. Grimm's viewing and uh, those of us that were at the funeral. Um, his passing as a member of council left a great void. And we're hoping that on the 26th to fill that void. Other than that, if there's nothing else, council will go into executive session. Yes. Uh, okay, go ahead. Um. I'd like to make a motion that we get a tree with a plaque on Randale for his service on council and as vice mayor and plan it outside here in Charleston. See who's the one that came up with the Do I hear a second? If not, I'll second it. You have a motion? Motion by Eggleston and a second by Cook. Has anybody got a discussion on it? Go ahead, Jen. Did you find out what kind of a tree it was that he would have preferred? No. Go ahead, Mary. Is this something that, um, rather than spend taxpayer dollars on, we can just it ourselves or I'm with or I'm with you if you want um, I would I would be more in favor of doing something like that than, than I have no problem spending with anybody else. I, I mean I'd be glad to contribute to that so I have no sure. problem doing it that way I just think that we should we spent five years on council and two years as vice mayor and he did a lot for the city So at that point, if we're going to do a uh, donation type thing, I don't think we need that on the, the books. I'll withdraw okay. my second. Okay. Withdraw your motion. Withdraw my okay. Now, are we all done? Okay, we're going to go into executive session to consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or a, an official and to consider the purchase of property. That was a mouthful. We're going to be here all night. That's, That's all right. right. We're going to be here all night. That's a lot to get done. 
I don't Give me think seven minutes. Take that long. You get over <laughs> seven <laughs> minutes. I need a motion though to go into executive session. So right. I'll make the motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Samuel, second. All right. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Executive session. And I would say for the audience, I doubt if we'll have anything else to uh, bring before council. At, at that point, we'll go into the session.